this is Bonnie. I'm seeing whoever's talking. Yeah. Yep. So it's, it's all about me now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi. Welcome to our little our little uh, painting event, little Saturday fun event. So we're gonna paint. Uh, we're gonna do a quick paint on this little fella, my little Nomi. And I've done them several ways. Today I'm just gonna do the basic quick, quick paint on him. And that's the one I'm gonna demo on, but we're gonna do these little fellas. I'm gonna talk about these little guys, the little baby ones, cause they're like so fun. So anyway, so I'm gonna flip my camera over and get painting. Where's my camera? There, oh, it's all about coffee. So can you see that okay? I hope so. So what I did is I put out a pattern packet without a line drawing, of course, because my line drawing is, is not mine to share. It belongs to um, Karen at, at Southern Ridge Trading Company, which is the chipboard company that we have. So I'm not sure, you all gave different options of things to buy, little various size uh, gnomes. Um, their chipboard. And I turned mine into little magnets, but you can wrap uh, wire and stuff around the tops if you wanted to, to like hang them on trees. And they were just kind of fun to do. You can make tags out of them. You can stick them on cards. I mean, the sky's the limit on them. Come on, so all yeah. I'm gonna do with those is I'm, while we're waiting for things to dry is I'll talk to you about how we pick different color combinations for these little guys. So I asked you basically to paint with uh, a coated gesso. And I have done that prepped all my pieces. We have several little pieces here with a coated gesso. And it just, and sand it. That just preps the wood, it seals the wood. If you didn't have gesso and you wanted to use wood sealer, that was fine. I've actually got the back of mine just for samples. So we didn't have to paint up in here because this is the layer that we're gonna do. But I'm gonna show you how we're gonna create our line drawing to start. Cause it's very simple. We don't need a line drawing for this guy. And I'm going to show you how we create a line drawing when we need one. So I line the hat up and I'm just going to draw under the hat with my pencil. And now you can see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I do have a light pencil line. So that's going to tell me where his face is going to go. So very straight and to the point and then we're going to take our pencil as well and we're just going to mark off a line here because that's his mittens. So we don't need a pattern. And if you look at down here, there's a little line by where his beard is. And I'm just going to circle that up and join it to the, the, the body and just create. So that's how I'm just going to kind of add a little line for his shoes. I don't know if you can see. Where's my camera? Way over there. So it's just, it's just simple line work. That's all we're going to do. And then that's going to allow us to paint the body. So I'm just going to kind of create this here, just an area, because I'm going to paint his face in here, but it, the rest is all going to be covered. So that's how we're going to create that drawing. And that's very simple. In the magic of television, because I wanted to work a little or you know, zoom and stuff, is I wanted to be a little bit faster. So I kind of started mine with just a quick coat of paint because said, well, while you guys are base coating that, I will talk about how we change colors. So I'm going to quickly do my, my line art here. So I know where his face is going to go. Then I'm just going to kind of create a, an area that I'm going to paint. This doesn't matter because this is getting painted covered with this. So what I want you to do is I want you to take, I used Wildberry. Now, I used a lot of obscure colors so that I'm not a person that likes to use a lot of red. I don't like like your traditional reds. I dyke my colors off on the pinky side. So how I pick my colors is I'll take my paints. There's a blue pink chiffon here somewhere. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. So I'll take my colors. So what I'll do is I'll start with is I'll pick a color that I like for my red. I picked um, De Decoart's New Wildberry. But what, it doesn't matter what red you want to use. It's in your personal preference. Oh, then I'll put it, pardon me? Oh. Then I'll put it upside down. And then I'll kind of go, okay, now I want my shading color. So I'll find a darker value and I'll put it beside it. Then I will find my medium value, which is one shade less. 
and then I'll find my brightest highlight value. So when you look at these colors, one should not stand out from the other. So if the shade is off, like if it's a greeny blue as opposed to a purpley blue, it's going to stand out and it's not going to look right. So you just pick your colors. If they look like they kind of go here, perfect. So that's how we're going to do this. So take the red that you picked, in my case, as for the pattern was Wildberry. And we are going to base coat the body. I'm going to give it a quick paint. I've got my palette. I'll put my Wildberry on there. And I'm just going to give it a second base coat so you guys can do a quick uh, base coat with it. And just give it a nice coat. Don't worry about the center area because that's where his beard is going to go. But we really want to make sure that his arms are covered, well painted. And this is also a color that covers very well. Another the reason that I use the gesso when I do my base coats to prep my surface is it helps all the colors go on and give you the true color, especially the brighter colors, because they go over quite well with the white. You're not trying to, to cover an existing color. So I'm not sure that we will finish this guy, but I'm going to do a very quick paint on him and show you like all the basics because I want to cover the fun stuff, of course. Very important that we have all the fun stuff. So get your body base coated quickly. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to stencil over it. And then I'm going to take the hat and my, my medium value pink, which in my case was cotton candy, one of my favorite pinks. And I don't, I think I had you painting alternate stripes, but this is going to make painting the hat so much easier and so much quicker is to paint the lightest value first. So in this case, the light value is the cotton candy, which is the lighter pink. When we paint the wild berry stripes over top, it's going to go on really fast instead of, you know, two or three base coats of each color. So I'm going to set this aside to dry and I'm going to paint this guy. And don't worry, I'm doing this part quite quickly, but it'll give us a chance to chat about some other things while you guys are waiting for them to dry. We do only have an hour. And if anybody's painted my stuff, I start getting all weird with, with little details and shading and highlighting and lines. That always is what takes up all the extra time. So by doing it this way, I'm showing you how I quick paint. just a very quick coat and these little wood shapes are so fun I just I, I did a little Halloween one for just for fun um, chipboard.ca where y'all bought these from is only about 20 minutes from my house Karen Beaupre and we I met her a few years ago at a trade show that we had here in the Okanagan Valley beautiful Penticton British Columbia and we kind of hit it off. She was farther away, but I started doing a little bit of work with her. And uh, she en ended up moving a lot closer to me. And since then, we've been sort of playing together. And now she has a storefront, which she opened up by the beach. Oh, yes, it's by the beach. Beautiful. And so I started painting samples for her and stuff. So that's how a lot of this stuff is sort of coming about. And see? No pattern required. That's why there's no pattern, you guys. Look how simple that is. And then we are going to take our mocha, my little face color, Santa's little face color, mocha. I'm gonna paint his nose and that place that we masked off for his face. And the reason I don't worry about where his face is gonna go, because I know where the hat's gonna go, so I'm just gonna paint. I'm not going to try to keep it in that line. It's just giving me the area where his face is going to go. No neatness here. We're just going to give him a little bit of a face area. Because once we put the pieces on, like so, in his little, his beard, so you can see here, 
he's covered. And the mess that we made is, is gone. So it's such a super quick, easy way to do that. And of course, we're going to paint his little nose. That would be Miss Lily. I don't know if she's being blocked out or not. But Lily is in all my videos. She barks at nothing. So his little nose and his hat. So those of you that are doing, if you're painting the little guys, it's gonna go into the little guys while you catch up there. If you're painting the little guys, it's exactly the same way. The little guys are of course etched in, the colors are etched, the lines are etched into the surface. I didn't pick up a new set, so I didn't, you know, have them with me. But the lines were already in it. So they're etched in, they're very, very tiny. I don't even know if you can see. But they were etched into it. So I just followed that design when I made the big guy. He was just the big version of the little ones. So to do the little guys, I used them as the guide for my big one. And then what I did was I wanted to show different color palettes. So if you wanted to do with like the blues, same thing with the blues. I picked my blues, I'll flip them upside down. I did exactly the same. So I picked four of my favorite blues. So my medium, my, my main base coat color is this one, which was turquoise blue. And then for the darkest value and then Darkest value being for shading was Victorian blue. And my softer medium value was my spa blue. And for my highlights was blue chiffon. And as you can see here, we've got all our values needed to create the little blue guy. Following exactly the same process. Base coating with the one, pick your base coat color, pick your medium your highlight and your darkest shading color. That's for the blue. Some of these colors are hard to get. I, I, they were just on my table and they're kind of my favorite little palettes. And then this is for the green, same thing. I went and I picked my medium, which was uh, the Green Lagoon. It's one of the newer colors with deco art. It's not really a green, it's kind of a bluey green, but same thing, I either go with really sort of bright greens or bluey greens. So same thing, and then I picked my second value, my shading value, and my highlight value. And that's created the little green fella. Too quite simple. So that's all you need to do. You just need to pick four colors that work in the palette. So well, tell us the green colors. Sorry? Tell us the green colors. The green colors were um, Green Lagoon and Eucalyptus Leaf, which is one of the newer colors as well. This has become a new favorite for me, Jadeite Glass. And these are on the pattern, if you picked up the pattern off my website. It's only $3, so it has all the colors and the alternates for the colors. And this one is uh, Light Lime, another one of my personal favorites for a very soft, pale green. So those were the ones I picked. But you could, of course, go into, like, you could even judge it from um, the old Hausers, Light Hauser, Dark Hauser, Medium Hauser, and then pick a highlight. It's the same, same idea. You could go into your traditional colors if you wanted to. So that being said, we can go back now. And I'm just going to update my face color again, just so it's base coated. There he is. And because I wanted to use all these colors and kind of bring them all together, I thought it would be fun that he should have, we're gonna go into the greens, that he should have green mittens. It's very important to have green mittens. So my green is the two colors, the jadeite or the, sorry. The Green Lagoon was for my darker color, which is what I used on this guy. He's also my shading 
color on the mittens and then I'll go to an even darker shade. Yeah, I shade everything twice, which is not unusual. So let's put a little bit of this. We're just gonna paint his mittens up very quickly. I painted all the way around in my original, but I'm not gonna do that here on the Zoom class just because it, it's very tedious and takes a lot of extra time, but you can certainly do that on yours. You know, especially if you go back and watch the video to finish. Kim is recording these, right, Kim? I hope so. They're just going to paint his little mittens. Yes, I am recording. I will be splitting it up into the four classes. Uh, so by Monday, I'll have them all linked to the website, but I'm hoping by tomorrow so that everyone can go back and follow along each class instead of having to do the whole massive scrolling through and we'll have it posted up on YouTube. And then, oh, I've lost my black. Guard your black, ladies. If you have, they're going to run out of black and white paint pretty soon. It's getting harder and harder to get. So tread softly with your blacks and whites. So with the black, of course, is his, his feet are black, his boots. What am I doing for time, Kim? Uh, you're good. You can keep going. We'll fit it all in. Don't stress. Just keep going. What? Don't stress? Don't stress. Just keep going. Everyone wants to learn more than they want to be cut off because of the time. <laughs> We're good. Well, we did. Yeah, I looked at my clock, but then I realized that we did chat for a while. So We did. We still get an hour, so keep going. I'm trying not to talk really fast because I do want to get this, this in there without being too... Uh, delicate and, and stuff. But yeah, with the recording, you can go back. And I'm just trying to show you all my little techniques of how we create and how we come up with color palettes. And, you know, and if, if you are trying to create something, you find a really cute wood surface, you know, at the Hobby Lobby or Michael's or something, and you go, oh my gosh, these are so cute. They would make great, great patterns. What I used to do when I first started out painting and I was doing craft sales and stuff was my favorite color palettes were Lori Speltz and Renee Mullins. They had regular color palettes. So they, they always had your base coat shade and highlight colors. And what I liked about that is it allowed me to take a color palette and paint really fast. So if I did a snowman, I chose the colors, the base coat shade and highlights that were my favorites. So I take these little tiny ornaments and base coat them with like light buttermilk and shade them with, with khaki tan and deep in shading with burnt umber and highlight with white. And then I had my piece done. I didn't have to go hunting for patterns. So there's always a way to find out a new palette for some of these fun little bits that you, that you think are really cute. Just go back to your favorites, go to, uh, you know, your favorite color palettes. Any designer has, favorite designer you obviously have a set of regular colors that you might use on a regular basis for that designer if you paint my patterns on a regular basis you start to find that there is a, a pattern in those just take those and apply them to to any piece excuse me i want i wanted to tell y'all i just ordered and got ordered and it's already been shipped white paint from oh craft h-o-f-c-r-a-f-t oh good yeah, was, Rosemary was telling me one day that that's getting harder and harder for people to keep in stock because everybody. Yeah, I'm, I couldn't find it anywhere, and I found it with them. Yeah. And they're so I'm like, I've I've got a half empty bottle, and I'm like, I'm like guarding it with my life. It's like, do I need it or not? Okay, so now we're going to go back and we're going to draw. So if you have the tiny gnomes, you don't need to. The tiny gnomes already have the etching in them, and I wish I I had picked up another one, and I meant to. But I hate, I hate, I hate taking all care and samples and coming home and then I have, then I have to paint them. <laughs> so what I did is I used that as a guide. So he's a guide and I can take my piece here for my hat and I know what my hat's going to look like. He's uh, one of them. He's this one. So I take the blue one, which basically as you can see that the pattern matches. And I'm just going to do with my, with my pencil, or the, in this case, this is a sort of a chalk pencil. I'm just gonna follow the pattern with about 3 8 inch or quarter inch or half inch, whichever you prefer. I'm just gonna follow the shape of the hat. I don't know if you can see that. 
I'm not using it very dark, but I have green. This is a green chalk pencil. And I'm just drawing in my lines. And you know, if they're off, it's okay. It's just a hat, right? Those of us in Canada, it's called, we call them toques. And it's really funny because I've been places in the States where they have no idea what I'm talking about. Tracy knows what I'm talking about. If you make a mistake, you just erase it. You call them saw cats or something, we call them toques. I said that to uh, one lady one time, I said I wanted a snowman with a toque on his head. And she said, what are you talking about? Okay, so just get, just roughly draw them in. I don't know if you can see those clearly or not, but they're just about three eighths, quarter inch, half inch, whatever your preference is. And then because we painted it with the pink first, it's so much easier now to take a brush that, you know, would fit that area. So in my case, I'm just going to take my, my trusty uh, black gold. This is number six and some nice fresh paint with my wild berry to paint my darker stripe. So there are my two middle values, my base coat color and my secondary base coat color, which is the, the lighter of the two. And I'm just going to start painting them. And just paint those stripes in. They don't need to be perfect either because we're gonna line between the stripes as well. Yell at me if I'm off camera. I do wander. But see, these don't need to be perfect. It's all base coating. I have, it always amazes me people. I hate base coating. I do. But I'm also um, very, a um, little bit on the anal side, very particular. I like it even. So it can be quite funny watching me try to base coat. I like shading. Most people hate it. I call it my F word, floating. We always do it in class because if you, anybody's read my patterns or painted my pieces, I like to float everything like four times before I'm happy with it. And see how easy that is? We're just following sort of like, don't make them straight across. Because if you go straight across, then you're not following the shape of the hat and it loses its movement. But of course, if you, that's the way they end up, it was not going to be wrong. It's going to make it fun and whimsical. So you start using the bottom as the guide. You can see that everything is rounding up a little bit. If you notice when I paint too, if I don't use a lot of paint, I pull my paint out and I flatten it into my brush. So I'm, I'm sort of always trying to keep that chisel edge in there. This brush is well loved, but it still works great. And if you start finding that your stripes aren't matching perfectly, that's okay. You can just fix them. To sort of change your uh, direction a little bit. Ah. We let that dry and go back and do it a second time. Do it a second coat. And while that's drying, and before we do our second coat, is I'm going to go into my light buttermilk and I'm going to base coat my beards. I'm just going to keep painting different things, you know, if you want to just jot down or it's all in the pattern packet anyway. So light buttermilk here, my favorite. Because the fun part of this project is actually doing the beard. Other than the thinking part, the beard. It's great. Okay. Even got a nice new brush. Look at that. New one. Very nice. I don't get excited about much these days, but a new brush, you know, it's very exciting. It was in my stash. I thought I wouldn't show you my regular everyday workhorse brushes. If anybody is looking for, you know, brush sets to use or good all good all purpose brushes, these Dynasty Black Golds are absolutely amazing. Just amazing for base for painting. They last well, they they take a little bit of abuse because I'm very abusive, but they're, they're just such a nice brush.
you can actually get if anybody's looking for for them at all and and the brushes that tracy uses is uh, the brushguys.com in the states great great people or maureen baker i know she's here she also sells them as well as paint you guys if anybody's looking for paint maureen baker are you still there I know she was. How's your paint stash, Maureen? Feel free to chime in and say how your paint stash is. I see her sitting there, but she's muted. Definitely don't be shy to promote your own stores and stuff. This Maureen, is unmute yourself and tell us how your paint and brush stash is, is doing right now. Are you, are you, do you have product? Just got a brush in her mouth. <laughs> Maureen, come on. <laughs> And she must have me turned off. She's just ignoring me. Oh, she's talking, but we can't hear her. Maureen, unmute yourself, honey. Anyway, this lovely Maureen Baker, who was too shy to come on, is a distributor. She does carry, she's a retailer, carries the uh, Dynasty Black Gold okay. brushes, and she carries the Americana paints. I just unmuted. Here I am. Here you are, honey. There Can you go? I can't your, find your product. Um, I do. We have, um, in fact, we have a big shipment that's coming in today from um, Deco Art. Woohoo! Woohoo! About eight lines of um, Dynasty. And we carry Stampendous. And we have a line of stencils. And we don't do any surfaces. <laughs> We do some surfaces, very few. Very few. Very few. Um, but the, um, you know, we had a lot of inventory in Americana and it's getting um, a little challenging at this, at this stage of the game. Uh, we do have the um, extreme sheens, the metallics, the uh, dazzling metallics. We have Media line, the me we have the media line and it's pretty well stocked. We well, do um, have media. I do have media. Oh, that's okay. awesome. And we do ship to Canada. I know Tracy was talking about um, shipping internationally um, from Canada to the United States. Um, shipping into Canada, I know um, probably a lot of you are from Canada. It's very expensive and there's nothing I can do about it. There's no way around it. Um, yeah going through customs and that's the other thing it does take four weeks it takes four weeks for us to get a um, shipment into Canada yep um, I'm not finding too many issues shipping nationally um, the speed is there you know every once in a while they lose something but um, but it is uh, it is we are in a new place and it's great. I have to say something if I can interrupt the class. No, go ahead. I think it's great, Deb, that you just talked about substituting colors, like just yeah. create a palette. You got a middle, a dark, a light, and a extra light. And it's like, that's Yeah, funny. that's what I was first taught. And I thought, you know, I've used it right up to this day to, yeah. to come up with colors. So if you're out of a color, it's okay. And it's okay if your piece isn't exactly the same. I thought that was fabulous um, because there's still a lot of paint available and a lot of uh, paint lines. So I thought that was great, Deb. I there are a lot of colors that are similar as well. So like yeah. if you're not sure what, like you don't have the right color palette to shade, like my, my fun is always trying to find what color is going to shade something. Yep. Because... You can't just go to the all famous, you know, black green or, or, you know, Hauser dark green or something. You have to find one in that tone. Yeah. So by putting them upside down, if it doesn't match, it's gonna it's gonna scream at you right off the bat. Right. And if it, if you go, that's awful. Then it's a good go ahead. That's right. Start with a lighter one and then build it up to the next value. I I because thought... deco art currently is only making. Um, 57 deco art skews for the acrylic paint, right? Yep. They are. They are. And, um, you know, and the, unfortunately, we're in a new surge in the United States. I don't know what's happening. Oh, here too, huh? Here too. In Not Canada. as bad as you guys, but definitely going, going up the wrong direction. Um, 
So um, I don't, I think that everybody's concerned about imposing too heavy of a restriction, but they're not going to loosen up the restrictions. No, <laughs> I can't. It's, it's economy based. Painting. Your painting is off the screen. Oh, sorry. I was just touching. I'm just touching up all my base coats while Maureen was talking. So it gives everybody a chance to, to get their colors on. So we've got, got all my, my coats. I'm just going to put another coat on my beard. I've painted the second stripe with my red. Now we'll be get ready to, uh, to carry on. Thank you, Maureen. That was good. Feel free to chime in or type in any, like type in your, uh, your website link. Yeah, Maureen, definitely promote yourself. And I, just to give you a comparison, I ship all over the world. Um, in Canada is my most expensive shipping as well. Our entire country fits into one of your states for population. So we're really spread out when we're the, I think it's like third largest land or country land mass wise. Yeah, we're land mass. We're only populated on the bottom half. We're so tiny for population. So um, you might think it's expensive, but even with the conversion rates often coming out of the States or going into the States, it's still cheaper than coming across Canada, which really sucks, but I know, right? Yeah. So don't, <laughs> that. don't be afraid to promote yourself and don't be afraid to put that post up there because if we are looking for something, we will buy yeah. it from you. Because a lot of people are always looking for product right now. And it's good to know that you are fairly well stocked because, um, like I need media line stuff and I can't get it anywhere. Yeah, we have a lot of media. I will tell you that the two areas that we don't have, we don't have any matte medium in media and we don't have any white gesso in media. You can convert those over to traditions. Yes. Traditions, and I mean, and it's not as, as superior of a product because, you know, no matter what, we have several matte mediums on the market and stuff, but they all do a little bit different things and deco art is probably I think one of the best because it it really doesn't all the components and Tracy can explain it better but I can put 15 layers of matte medium on my project and you don't even know it's there it's not sticky it's matte you can't feel it mm -hmm. it's, it's absolutely amazing and as far as gesso goes I mean I, I ran out of gesso so I just went to Walmart and just got my big old gesso I and mean, gesso is getting covered anyway right so that's my my uh, stash for when I wait for my media to come. Uh -huh. Okay, so we should have everything base coated now. So we're going to start and I'm going to show you how we quickly, we're going to stencil his body. And I love the fact that we just hide everything. So you can use any scrolly stencil you want. I thought this was absolutely adorable, this new uh, tree stencil that Karen came up with at shipboard.ca. And I believe you could order him. I think he was set up along with everything. So to stencil, bear in mind when we look at him finished, you're not going to see a lot of it. Okay. So we're just going to go and with the cotton candy or say you're doing um, like the green, I base coated, Grace base coated the green one. And these are in the pattern where I have uh, stated all my colors, like at the bottom of the pattern. On my website, it tells you like if you were doing green, these are your colors. You do blue, these are the colors. And the reds, these are the colors. So I base coated with eucalyptus and did my stenciling with the jadeite on, on the, uh, the green one. And on the blue one, I base coated with the turquoise blue and did my stenciling with the uh, spa blue. That way I could still do my highlight with the lighter blues and my shading with the darkest value. So I work with the two inside values. So I'm just gonna line them up. So primarily, I just wanna get that onto his, his, um, his arm. And I wanna make sure that we can see it coming down because it's gonna be under his beard. So it's gonna have to come off of here. So go right to the end and just turn your stencil around or you can go back and re-stencil, whichever you prefer. I take my trusty stencil brush that's already nicely stained pink, which is, I love these. These, Maureen, do you have these? Dynasty stencil pros? I do. Oh, these are my favorites. Dynasty makes amazing brushes and all stencil brushes. This one, oh my God. It's like <laughs> just amazing. Um, I do have them. 
I do have those. And we have mezzaluna and IPC. Oh, yeah, yes. I am doing a uh, little something coming up with the IPC and the fluid acrylics. So stay tuned, people. Okay, so stenciling, and you watched Tracy this morning. Deb, I have very a soft. I take paint. Deb, I have to interrupt. Uh, we have a sand gray knot available. What now? Oh. Yep. Yeah. Instead of using sand gray, just a I light think... gray color. Okay, perfect. Thank you. A dark gray, just the undercoat of the beard is what it is. So it's a very soft gray. So dove gray. Yep. Um, dove gray would work. You can just do a very soft, like just a touch of black into your light buttermilk to create a very light gray if you wanted to. Uh, let's see. If you do any gray that you have, just add a little bit of white to it. Do y'all know how? I'm going to show you how I create. If I don't have a color, this is what I'll do. So I've got, I'll do what I call brush mixes. Like say I'm going to shade with something. So let's get my shader brush out. So if I wanted to do and create just that light gray, I'll take, I know that I need mostly the light color. So I'll take a bit of that and then I'll just, just a hint of the black. And see I've created a light gray, but I'm still a bit darker than what I want. So I just add in a bit more and a bit more until I'm happy with it. That's what I call a brush mix. You just keep adding your color. So if you wanted to do it with, with your brush and create, okay, I just want to create a puddle. I want to create a light gray. Then I'm just going to tip my brush like ever so lightly into that black and just start creating my little brush mix. Just smooshing it in there, adding more of the light. It makes enough to do what I want it to do. And say I want it a little lighter, I just pick up more white. The trick is, is to do just a very tiny amount. Like you don't want to start pouring puddles of paint out and mixing the two together, just a very light brush mix. That's all it is, very, very lightly. And then, you know, if you got too much, then just start working with the little bit of edge. And get it even lighter until you're happy with it. And my sand gray, whoops, that went the wrong direction. It's very light, so I can just add more. It's just creating a very soft color, and it doesn't have to be exact. Is that what color I base coated the beard and the mustache? I think I did, didn't I? Let me check my list. I do weird things sometimes. Hey, Jim, did you help Brenda? Oh, no. Deb, I'm... mute yourself when you do that. <laughs> yeah, hang on. My neighbor was having issues. Okay, so anybody have my pattern handy? Nope. No? Nope. I do. I do. I've got your pattern. What color did I base coat the beards with? Uh, base coat the beards. Oh, with the sand gray. So, yes. Yes, so, and gray. Yeah, so just create your very light, light mix. It doesn't matter because we're going to do layers of paint over top anyway. Or if you did buttermilk like I asked you to, just leave it buttermilk. It isn't going to make a difference. Okay? So anyway, I've got my pink ready to go. Oh, Brenda figured it out. And then I'm just going to do like Tracy, very softly. I'm going to rouge. Can you see? Yeah. Just very softly. And I don't need to come way over to this side because it's all covered with the beard in the middle. Gives me very light. And let's see. We're going to make sure we do the same thing down here because we want to make sure that it shows up. It shows up in these bottom corners because that's what's going to show when his beard is on. 
I just go back and basically lay it out the same way. If you end up with an overlap, don't worry about it because it's, it's uh, going to show. It isn't going to hurt it. Because the beard's going to go there. Oh, nice. That's like... So there, that's a quick, and see, you know, imperfections in here, it isn't going to matter. We don't care about that. Because now, we have our little guy right here. And when this goes on, it isn't going to matter. See? You can't see where any imperfections were. And if we went over onto the shoe, that's okay. We'd just touch it up with the black. And that's how our little guy's going to look. Okay, so I'm going to go back into my face and make sure that my face is where it needs to be, where my hat, make sure I've got everything. Then I'm going to start the horrific thing called shading. We all hate shading, right? We love it. So because we painted, we started with the beard in the light buttermilk. So don't fret. I'm going to show you how we how we correct that in such an easy, easy way. You're going to be blown away. It's just amazing. Because you can't make mistakes in this stuff. I'm going to take my shading brush, my angle shader, which I just love. Whatever your favorite brush is for floating your color is all you need. And I asked for raw sienna. I, of course, I'm out of raw sienna. So I went to Honey Brown, which was close enough for me. It's so close to the raw sienna, it isn't going to make a difference. See, I substituted. And I'm going to do a quick float under the hat. And I've placed it on there just so I know where it's going to be. And I've lined it all up as if it was, I mean, we could glue it down, but I don't want to just yet. So I'm just going to do a little float under his hat. That little bit of depth there, not a lot, it's not that dark, but it doesn't need to be because it's mostly hidden. It's just, you know, we have to float it because it's there, right? Yeah. You see it better when I take the hat off. And then his nose gets a float along the bottom. That simple. I did not do any floating of shading, dark shades on the snowman or on the sand, on the little gnomey body. I didn't think it needed it really because it's it's um, it's lost. It's primarily lost. But if you wanted to, you could get really you know tedious and fussy with it. But that would be your choice. So I'm going to go back to my hat now. And I jump around between my floats and my colors, but primarily I'm just trying to keep everything moving. So with my wild berry, which was my darkest color, we're gonna shade. So I take my brush and I'm gonna come, and nice thing is I can go over everything. See that? I don't have to be really tedious about it. The second time around I do, but not on here because it's the same color as the dark stripe. So I've shaded that and turn them over and I'm going to do my highlight with the cotton candy, which was the color that I did the light pink stripe. And the fun part is, is that you can just go from top to bottom again. It doesn't matter because it's going to put my highlight on the darker pink. See? That's, so that's my first shade, my first highlight. How perfect is that, right? Very quick, very easy. If you want to mop it, you can. If not, you can leave it. Take my little... My, my floats tend to be actually quite wet. 
my floats are, are uh, not dark to beginning with, so that's why they tend to end up in this very light, shave me twice type of thing. So now we let, by flipping it over as I've allowed this side to dry. So now I'm going to go to my Napa Red, which is my darkest shading color. And this is where if you want to get fun on here, you can, but you don't, you know, that's your personal preference. So I'm going to take my Napa. I love this red. It's my favorite red for shading. And I'm going to blend it out in my brush. And now I have to be a little bit more. No, I don't. We don't care. Now you can go and shade each individual little stripe if you want to, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go and I'm going to do them all because I love how it, it sat on top of that wild berry for the first lighter pink. It just brought everything together, I thought. That's why I float things twice. I love how it, it the more transparent, like my darkest shading color is usually a transparent color. So it will become, um, whatever's underneath it shows through. So that's why I shade twice. And my first shading will often be a color that is a little bit more opaque, not as dark as the others. And then the final one is usually one of the transparent colors. So now I'm gonna do my final highlight on that with my pink chiffon. I'm do a quick highlight on there. As you can see, I let my palette get quite messy. I'm not, not too worried. As long as I got a place to blend my paint, I'm happy. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna refloat my highlight. Here. Easy peasy. Can you see that now? The right way up. See, I've got my, my highlights and my shading. If you want, you can. I mean, it's up to you. I'll show you if I want to do a couple of little darker floats on here. Most of them are going to get lost anyway, so it doesn't matter. But if you wanted to, you could take the snapper red because it is the shading color for the uh, wild berry. And I can say, put a float here. Maybe separate, oh, sorry, separate the uh, mittens. Just a little float where the mittens separate the body. Yeah. I could, doesn't need to, it's okay. okay. So now, put that on there so we know that that's done. And we know he's got this amazing little nose. It's gonna sit right here and that's upside down. And that reminds me now that I need to take my light buttermilk, float a highlight on the nose. And now he's got these cute little mittens, which I'm just going to do a shade. So I did my jadeite. I'm going to shade it with the uh, eucalyptus. Give it a little float because it's fun. And that just, you know, right here underneath the mitten cuff, which is clearly already indicated in the, in the, in the cutout for you, which is why I like cutouts and things like this. See? And then the highlight color for that jadeite is the light lime. Now I could have gone to the Green Lagoon, which was the medium value, and then double shaded it and got really you know, finicky on it, but it doesn't really need to, it's just a small little mitten. If it was a bigger piece, then I would. I have to stop being upside down. Someone should yell at me. Okay, I'm just keeping those there for fun. Up to go. And then we're going to put a little highlight with the lightest value and the tips of this mitten. Deb, I have a question. Yeah. You, you use the term float and I'm watching what you're doing. Are you just using a little bit of water off screen when you make a float or what are you doing? Oh, let me show you. Yes, yes. Okay, here we go. Yeah, see, it's a common term, right? It's like some of your things and then we don't realize that other people, yeah. you know, don't always know. So for floating, my floating lesson, it'd be, is I take my, I like using an angle shader. The reason I use an angle shader is I can keep my paint in the tip and the water and the rest. You can also use your flat shaders, same thing. You 
load it the same way, but it's, I tried everything. I like the angle shader. So I'm going to show you with my angle shader. So what I do is I go into my water bucket. Here's my water. Okay. Don't look at my water bucket. <laughs> and so I wet my brush and I just blot it on paper towel and flip it over. That's going to take the bulk of the water out of my brush. So it's not dripping wet, but you're not wiping it off. You just blot, blot. And then, see, it's all in about how you fold your shop towel. It's very important. Make, my, make all my students fold it. So cute. Then you take your brush and you just corner load it. Just that little tip. Okay, into the paint. Then you go onto a clean piece of the palette and you put the brush in. Do it totally flat and just go back and forth, keeping, keeping the paint side and the water side separate. So you know, don't work your brush this way because then you end up with a wash of paint, right? We don't want that. So load, water, blotter, tip, go to a different spot. And so I blend it out. And I like to blend it. You know, people have different ways, but I like to work it into my brush. That's just my personal preference. So when you look at my brush, you see that there's only paint on the first half. Yeah. Not on the other half. Okay. So when I go to do my shading, shaded white, let's just shade this little head. So I keep my brush totally flat. See? Oh yeah. The water, the water that's in the rest of my brush isn't going to go. It's going to help pull that paint out. Cool. Yeah. So this is called floating shading. Um, yeah, and then I see by keeping it flat, a lot of pe new painters have a tendency to want to keep off the tip, which isn't going to work. So by doing it flatter, it allows the water in the rest of your clean brush to help move that paint along. So that's the floating tip. I would say I was definitely the first, the, the beginner painter where I would use the tip of my brush. <laughs> that's cool. You know, people find their own ways. You know, I took several classes way back when, and that's sort of what, what came up with me. And I took, I finally ended up using the angles, which I fell in love with. Okay, so now we're finished now. we are finished him. So we're gonna put him aside. We're gonna put his little hat aside. And we're gonna put his little nose aside so we don't lose it. And we're gonna get these beards out, okay? So this is where we're gonna have some fun. Go up here. So we didn't have sangre for some people, so we're gonna make it again. We're gonna make enough that we can use and we're gonna brush mix it. So I'm gonna take my little bit of black and I'm gonna take, I had light buttermilk, where is it? Light buttermilk. And the difference between using light buttermilk and, and uh, the white, it just gives you how the tone, how the tone comes out. I made quite a bit because I'm going to use it for more of the, the beard as well. So to paint the beard, I've got three different brushes. I've mentioned the um, black gold wave brushes in my pattern packet. And these brushes have these fun little, very good, fun little teeth on them. See, they've got a little teethy thing. They've got different lengths. So it's called a wave brush. This is a wave filbert because it's rounded on the end. She fixed it. Yeah. Or this is a fan brush. And this is the uh, Fandango fan brush. It sort of acts like a rake, but you can do a million things with it. It makes grass and the whole shebang. This is a great brush for making hair and beards and fun things as well. So this is the Fandango. And it's a small one. Or we go into our traditional rake which has all these tiny little uh, hairs that stick out over top of the original brush. So these ones will create, we're gonna paint with either one of these brushes. Now, if you don't have any of these brushes handy, then you can take a regular brush and I'm gonna do the first coat with a regular brush just to show you how you can still create the beards if you don't have these fancy brushes. And we're gonna start with our brush mix with it. So I'm gonna water my brush and get a little bit of water on my brush. Then I'm going to take a spoonful. Let's get this stuff here. I'm going to take a spoonful of my light buttermilk. 
Then I'm going to just take a tiniest of little drops of black. And see how I've already got this nice light because you don't need hardly any black. And I didn't make a lot. I don't need to make a lot. So then I'm just going to go into my piece and just sort of almost like dry brush it along. I'm letting the brush create a little bit of texture. I'm not base coating. I'm using just the tips of the brush. And it's kind of like go straight up and down or follow the lengths of the beard. And this is going to give us, instead of base coating it gray, this is giving us that layer of gray. So let me hold that up and see. This is if we just use a regular brush and that's okay because it's all in the layers and it's all in the final which will create a beard the way I like to make my beards. And as it dries, you can play with it, because as it's drying, you can control it a little bit and you take some off, so that's okay. So that's with a regular brush, which is perfectly fine. You're still gonna get a fun piece. My others is this wave filbert, which I just love. Same thing, I'm gonna wet it. It's always the key is to have water in your brush. Then I go into my little mixture and I'm gonna make some more. Because all brush mix is just making more. You never get the same color twice, but you get almost the same color because you're working in a little puddle. Then I'm going to add a bit more water because I want to take my, my wave brush and I'm going to splay it out like so. Can you all see this okay? Kim? So when I splat it out, it spreads the brush a little bit. We can, we, can we can see very well. Okay, good. So then I will just tap it very lightly on my paper towel, very lightly. And then I take my brush and I just use the very tip and paint. And it's okay if you get little blotches because it's all about layers. And we're only working off of the tip of the brush. Either way, same thing. And don't worry if you start to run out of paint because you can just make more or you just add a little bit of water in this case. Splay your brush out, don't be afraid of it. It's always as long as you clean it good later. And you'll see as we start to build up these layers that each layer gets buried and the beard does become defined. I have a question. Is yeah. your palette made of paper or is it cardboard or is it No, wood? this is called a palette paper. Oh, okay. Thank oh, you. Yeah. And reverse. No wonder I can't do anything right. Video settings. Let's see if I can mirror. There. Ah! No wonder I keep going the wrong way. There you go. So, nope, doesn't stay. Palette paper. It's a waxy paper. You know, same as like, you know, you can, I can work off of the uh, mat like Kim and Kim does and, and paper crafters and, and mixed media artists do. But I like this because I'm just messy and I love my palette paper. And you can just throw it away after. Yeah. Yeah. And some people, I mean, you can pull off the big chunks and use it for quite a while. When, you know, if the big one's dry, you can go, like I can come up here take that off the big chunks if i want to like make it last which i have to do sometimes when i can't get out of here okay so my next layer should be buttermilk so now i still have my buttermilk and my black perfectly the way i wanted them so i'm going to take a little bit of the light the light buttermilk out and i'm going to make a little puddle off to the side can you see it? There we go. Make it off to the side. Then I'm going to add some water to it. So I'm watering it down so it's a little bit inky, but it's not really inky. And if I think it's too inky, I just pull in a little bit more paint. And this I prefer to mixing puddles of paint because when you mix puddles of paint, you end up with a whole palette full of something and you still don't have the color you want. Okay, so I'm flaring out my brush again. So it's all squishy. I can dab it if I'm worried about any globs of paint that are on it. And then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do my beard again. And I'm working right off the tip. And if you notice I got my pinky finger on here, that's just to help to keep my, my hand upwards. And I'm just following the shape of the brush. And we're not base coating, we are just adding the appearance of hair. 
the illusions of hair. And you know what? If you end up with a piece that's solid like that, don't worry about it because it gets buried. And this is a very simple version of my, I can get quite, uh, quite busy with my beards if I want to, and like I have on my gnomes and things. But this is the technique that I use. Okay, so it, can you see that okay? It's got uh, like a little bit of a two-tone color to it now. It still doesn't look like much, but that's okay. And then we'll do the little guy. And you'll see when I start getting into the lighter colors, how much simpler it gets. When I do my beards for my, my, my gnomes and things, I tend to use probably about five or six colors. This one, because he's simple, is we're only using a, um, a minimal amount of colors. Now, if I wanna get really, really technical, I don't know how many of you guys have seen this guy, but this is my, uh, it's my busy fluffy beard. So I get really, you know, there's probably about six layers, six or seven layers of paint on that one. He's a Zoom class, by the way, but he's cut off now. Sorry. Um, okay. So then I go into my next layer, which is warm white. And I use warm white because warm white is not um, as vivid as white white. There is a difference in the color tones. And if you can see that, this is a little bit more creamy. And this is titanium white. Now, if you don't have warm white, then all you got to do is put white on your palette. And I'm going to do the mix because I'm down to like my tiny little bottle of warm white, which I'm savoring. So I'm going to put my white white, which I'm going to need for other layers. If you don't have warm white. Now, if you have warm white, go ahead and use warm white if you don't want to color mix. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to do another mix. So I'm going to take another puddle and I've got this puddle. Oh, you don't want that. Don't get green in it. Okay, so I'm going to take a little puddle, go up to a separate place. Then I'm going to take the equal amount of the warm, of my titanium white and I'm going to make that lighter version. And that will just give me more of a warm white, softer white. A little bit more. Yeah, perfect. And that'll just give you the value between the two. So I'm going to go in here, same thing, squish my brush right into there with a little bit of water, make sure it's not dripping. And now you should start to see some of the hairs. Once again, right off my tip of my finger. Like you, each of these layers as you build, if you were doing like a more defined piece, you can start using this to define the direction of the hairs. In this case, I'm just kind of creating a, a beard, sort of following the, the layout of the cutout. But it's by no means a fancy beard with different directions and fun stuff. Again, just working right off the tip. And it can kind of even dry brush a little bit too. They, you can get really unique looks with this brush. Now, can you see it now? It's got, I'm going the right way. Can you see the different colors in it now? A simple version. Of course, we want to get them right off the edge here. And do the other one. Stop going green. Whoa, my green in my beard. So as long as your brush is all splayed, it's ready to go. Get wet. Take a little bit off on paper towel. It's a great all-purpose brush, this one. Maureen probably has these too, I think. There. Yeah. So I've got my two, got those layers. And now we're going to do a final layer with just the white but it's actually not the final layer if you want to get really technical. Let's go away from anything that's colored. Over here is white. Don't want his beard to be green. All right. So the white, should start to see it now.
And normally I, I would work in a, a specific direction, but because of this particular project here, it doesn't really matter. Because I'll show you how we create the beard shape. Now I did add in the pictures of the big guy here, I did it without doing um, this other layer, the secondary layer, because I wanted to show both ways. For simplicity wise, we're doing it just with the two pieces. But those of you that are that are really into you know decorative painting and do your patterns, is you can actually create the illusion of having his mustache with this fun shading technique. So I did this because I wasn't too sure of what group of demographics we were gonna have in this class. So I thought it would be fun to create two different looks. So I'm doing my brush mix like I showed before to get that light gray, okay? And so we wanna give them kind of a bit of a, if you want to, and this is all up to you, kind of a bit of a mustache. I might make you panic just a little, Deb, because I'm going to breathe, breathe <laughs> five minutes just because we've got Karen coming. Up. I know she's got to close her store while she's. Oh, yeah, this is uh, just uh, almost the end here. Perfect. <laughs> so anyway, I kind of created the illusion of a mustache. So if you want to try it and you absolutely hate it, it's going to get covered anyway. And then. I'll just go back and update my white a little bit so that I'm covering. It's probably the busiest day in in uh, in in Pen Peachland today. <laughs> Longer Karen waits, less panicking she does. So I just kind of softened it. So to finish the beard off. I went to white, white, again, oh, let me get this guy done. He wasn't done. Okay. So I take my liner brush. This is how I finish my beard. And this is tedious. So this is something that you just do later when you're bored is I don't water it down a whole lot. I turn my beard to face me and I just start pulling some hairs. It gives like some some little hairs, especially if I did decide to add a mustache. It, it'll help define the direction of your hairs if you wanted to. Just a tip, plop tip, and that's how I did him. I'm doing this really fast, but that's basically, you can add a little bit. And it's all in the color photo that's in the download. And you can see now why there is no pattern because you don't need one. He's so cute. Thank you. Okay, so I'm not gonna finish that, but anyway, so what you do now is you're gonna just glue them all together. And I just use, you know, whatever glue you have. Uh, Alien's tacky glue is my favorite. And we put his little, this little nose in there and I find if I line up beard I do the beard first line it up as best I can so you want to this little this now this doesn't look rude anymore because his beard is back on there and then I will put the hat on do on the hat and just line it all up and don't worry if your hat didn't fit and your in your shading was off because you can still go back and fix it glue them all together. And then I did a brush on of um, glitter and a little bit of snow text and some glitter and added just have at it with some details, add some stripes to his mittens. Um, Eyeballs. Little embellishments to stick up here just to give him a little added something, something. And then his nose goes on last. And dot in a couple of tiny little eyeballs because he's got to be able to see where he's going, right? And in the pattern, it also talks about, I do line between them with some white and stuff. So is this good? 
Did we get enough information to do these today? Kim? Oh, I think it was great. I'm waiting for anyone else to speak up, unmute, and just tell Deb how you found that. Uh, at the same time, we're going to get yeah. the screen switched over for Karen. Do you any questions? Okay. That you might